To get into the actual betrayal news, since people are gagging for it, let's start with Atlas, and I'm sure this will be a very quick discussion. Uh, any Atlas experts who want to give their opinions on the upcoming changes and what strategies you think people might start using? That was a pretty loaded question. <clears throat> a lot, yeah, a lot to unpack there. Where do you want to? Where do you want to start? Okay, the initial like shuffling of the tears. Let's start with that. Um, well, I I like they're changing things around. That's like the second time they're changing the atlas now. And in the latest latest big last, Jonathan said that they have like a system right now. So this might actually be a more more common thing now to happen. I just wonder how it's gonna like how often they're gonna do it. But I, I personally like it. Every time they do this, I can spend like multiple hours just like looking at the picture and like figuring out stuff. I love that. On a minor note, I'm also quite happy that all the red maps are now connected to each other within the inner circle of the of the atlas. Um, it helps a few things. Like it helps with spawning maybe your first red atlas or red elder to get 15 15 memory fragments. You don't have to like jump off into yellow maps to get them around the corner and do awkward crap like that. Um, and it helps with like red map completion as well, at least for people who are maybe progressing their atlas a little bit too hastily. Since we like the idea of them reshuffling, what is like the right time? Because if they change the atlas every league, then people might feel lost. Is it like every other league? Like what's the time frame, do you think, for reshuffles? I think every other league is a, is a, is good because you'll, you'll have like, you'll have like the natural, everyone needs to figure everything out. And then the league after is like, oh, okay, we know what we're going to do. And everyone feels like comfortable. It's like, okay. And then we can explain, okay, the next league, okay. Need to figure things out again. So like, just to have everyone not, I think it's a good thing to not have the players feel like they missed out on an opportunity. So they will always have a, a league to, you know, get that experience of, of making it the right way of doing it. Yeah. And I think it would be like, isn't like the, the how they're playing the leagues, we have the league and then the next it's like an expansion, then we have a league and kind of like an expansion again, like a minor one. So how would yeah. it be in the minor expansion, so I guess? Oh, so you want to like swap it around, not have the reshuffle at the expansion, but have it in the bit in the between, in between? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Because usually expansions so give so much other shit. Mm. So I don't think we need that on top of it. That's a bit much, yeah. I gotta agree with that. Um, the thing I'm most sad about, though, the, the change that I'm least happy with in this atlas is where a lot of the unique maps ended up. Because okay. already unique maps didn't really feel that worth running. This league in particular, because they didn't have sulfide in them, but just generally they've been on the decline. And now we've got Hall of Grandmasters is a tier 8, so you're not getting like red maps returns from that. And Disfavor card is super out of meta and not worth much, so it's just not really worth farming. Obas is a tier 5. You can't get I-83 level zones from that anymore, unless they screw with the eye level like they did with Parandus Manor. I, I don't know. Um, it's just, it's a little disappointing to me. I want these unique maps to feel like really unique and challenging mm. experiences at, at least a few times. I mean, make it, just make it, I don't know, make it, uh, just make it nice. At least one of them to like be like, okay, if, oh, I get like a unique box with some unique maps and there's a chance I get like that one thing to like help my Atlas progression. I think that could be nice. To always like have that experience with unique maps. I still think my back. favorite unique map at the moment is actually the one which gives the shield based on how you clear it. I think that's it's kind of. Mm, I think that's the direction they more want to go into because they also did the same thing with the Doriani boots, like different boots based yeah, on how yeah. you kill it. So I feel like they want to go more in like unique rewards for unique maps kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going back to a bit the uh, the spreading of the maps, they. It definitely looks like they, they put a lot of thoughts into it because they like split a lot of the good good maps that you used to have in, in groups into like different portions of the Atlas even more now. Like you don't have like other than maybe uh looking at the estuary, like the T10 and then from there, everything else seems to be like really spread out. So it's really hard to like pick a place and then have held like influence there and have all the good maps in there. Yeah, I think that's something that hasn't been mentioned very frequently when I've seen discussions on this topic, but I think it's a real possibility that we might see some rehashings of density in, in maps. Because, um, you know, it's, it's a complete rework of the Atlas and with maps in new positions, some of them are going to be less favorable for sextanting and, 
you know, just less favorable maps overall. So maybe they want to buff the density to compensate mm. for that change. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that would that would be very welcome because I would love to see something like Plateau be worth running for some reason. You know, it doesn't, it's not like a particularly, it's an okay layout. It's pretty easy to follow, but it's not got like good diff cards. It's not in a good spot on the Atlas. It doesn't have good density. I, I want every map to at least be like an option, even if it's not a the best good option. one. Yeah. I will say though, with the tower, oh, I'm scared. Running tower at T15, that dude was already scary. And now you want to do it six, six levels higher? You're crazy. Just don't get hit, mate. Just don't get hit, mate. I'm not care. I'm not care of tower because unless it, unless you have like super speed Brutus, it's pretty easy to dodge the the slams if you're like close to him. But then we have the summit, which is just like. No matter what the guy does, it just like tears you apart. Just don't get hit, man. No matter what skill he uses, it just you just die. It's it's crazy. Even as a T12, it's good though. I like it. I'm excited. It's gonna be a good yeah. time. So for the real meat and potatoes, shape strap or full completion or both? Um, I think what I'm gonna be going for is because, like Carve said, it's the way they designed the atlas with the groupings um, and the the clustering. Uh, I don't know if this was your intent when you mentioned it, but basically it's a lot harder to find one spot in the Atlas where you have a bunch of different good maps next to each other. So what I'm going to do is a strategy that focuses on sustaining a single map, which is having full completion except for one Elder T16 map, and just focus in on that one good map that I can find somewhere in a corner. Like Armory looks pretty good, or um, Toxic Sewer, I believe, does get hit by pretty much all the Sexton spots around it, just barely, so Toxic Sewer seems like a very good candidate as well. I really hope that they, um, they do a lot of density changes. Just so we have to like re uh, discover what is good yeah. and bad, right? Because if everything is just as it is right now, it's too easy to figure out the atlas if we don't actually have to go in and explore and try some things out. Because people spend like hours of like counting mobs with the um, with the rampage buff and everything to figure it out, right? It's not it's not always apparent because a layout that makes monster cl uh, very clustered makes it feel like it's there's more monsters in there because like you blowing up big packs, but like larger maps uh, could actually have more more monsters, but it's just you don't you don't see it because yeah. they're like spread out, right? And then they maybe have a good section spot and like a ton of spawns will spawn when you section it and all that. So there's like, uh, yeah, I, I hope to, um, I hope that they're going to just overall just do a, a big rebalance on that. And then uh, remember in Beast Jury, when uh specific mm. monsters with specific beast mods spawned on specific maps so i'm mm. like i'm like thinking uh what like we're get, we know that they're gonna streamline it right but we don't know mm. exactly how but yeah back to the back to the uh, target's question about the uh, full completion or or uh shaping i think what i personally am gonna do is just to otherwise full completion but then have like no t11 12 and maybe like 13 or 10. So then I have like, I can do Uber Elder if I want to. And then if I was, you want to just like do easy, easy maps, then I just do those 11 to 12 or whatever. I think Atlas is going to be really interesting this league with how many things we have to interact with on the Atlas. I'm really looking forward to it. And maybe some of these maps that I talked about earlier that were left hung out to dry, they might end up being the perfect candidates for master farming or for syndicate farming or something. There's, there's more systems at play and that always helps encourage diversity i'm very happy about that um i just hope none of them are implemented in a way that just leads to degenerate gameplay you know like not actually playing the game but just trying to find that one lever to click you know like the what was it in diablo 3 for a little bit after it came out you went and like Chess broke runs. vases instead yeah. of yeah. playing the game i don't want that yeah but you're saying that you don't want other people to opening maps and then you just go click this full fight I, I mean, the, the actual <laughs> delving in that is at least gameplay. That actually leads into another discussion that I wanted to talk about. I brought it up when we had Jonathan on Bay Class last episode. They've confirmed that there will be prophecies affecting the new masters. And I'm very worried that that's going to lead the delve ladder to be a situation of who can buy the most Nico prophecies. Probably. Uh, to, to the extreme, yeah, probably. 
I would really, I really, I really want them to emphasize more of like the players having control over this rather than it being like a, a random event and then you have to buy your way to it. I don't really, I don't like that system too much. I like it better when we can control. Oh, also, um, one thing I thought about regarding the Atlas is that, um, so we know we have all the, we have all the spots, right? Where we can say, like, we can do the sex turns and the shaping and all that. Well, I feel like internally what they should have, I don't know how to like plan out how things need to be, but there should be like a checklist of what is the, what is the score if we want to give different maps in terms of like, what is like the threshold for a map to be acceptable in PoE, right? Let's say that they will have maps with a score of like three to five, and then anything that goes below needs to be buffed a little bit, right? So it can either be uh, sextant placing, uh, general like map density. It can be quality of div cards. It could be uh, bestiary monsters and all that kind of stuff. So you could have something like, um, you could have like, what's it called? Uh, what's that map? Plateau. And it spawns like the best bestiary monsters. Yeah. I mean, that's also a way to do it. And... More systems at play. It's... Yeah. That, would be, that would be amazing, but I don't think they have anything like that. I mean, I hope so, that they've thought it that they, far. They might have, they might not have like a spreadsheet or something actually planned out, but I'm sure all of these factors come into play when deciding yeah. how to design a yeah, map and sure. where the map might go. Um, one other like specific thing I wanted to touch on. It seems like they've thrown. Unless I've missed one somewhere, it seems like they've thrown all of the maps that can give you Doctor cards at least up to Tier 10 or into, like, red maps. Doctor and Fiend, I should say. So, like, the, mm -hmm. the actual give you a Headhunter sets. So maybe that means that Nurse will drop in some of the lower tier maps so that if you want to, you know, 3k life MF Windripper, then you're farming for Nurses because you have to farm in a Tier 4 or 5 map. And if you can work on improving your build, then you can start farming for Doctors, which seems like this nice, nice little progression. And anyone who missed I, um... it, Nurse is a new div card which gives you Doctor cards, and I fucking love that, by the way. But go on, Nicky. I have a bold prediction. I'm almost certain I'm right. Nurse is going to be um, eight times more likely than the Doctor. That's very bold of you. One um, thing which I like, it's though, more rare. is I've got an open div card purchase, so if we wanted to go full meme, Nurse div card, <laughs> boys, eh? Hey?